Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. And today we're looking at the notification alarms that we get on digital watches, primarily Casio watches, and how effective are they as far as the audible versions of those watches. So I'm going to do this introduction in three minutes or less, and I'm going to be reminded by a three-minute timer on my Casio SGW500. So there's our three-minute warning. So the, the audible alarms are typically used for something like a sleeping alarm, an alarm to wake us up, something to keep us on time for appointments, and also things during the day like cooking. And those might be relegated to the alarm or the timer. Most of them will have an alarm before they have a timer. So if you're looking for a digital watch, you're more than likely going to get an alarm before you end up with a timer on a Casio or on any other digital watch. These two functions, I think, are critical for the basics of a digital watch. And so when we look at digital watches and how effective they are, one of the things we need to take into consideration is the volume of the audible alarm. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at how loud it is. We're going to look at how this might play into a factor as far as people with maybe hearing uh, disabilities or people who have very sensitive hearing. Um, also, if this is an alarm that you're going to be using uh, to wake you up and you have a spouse, husband, or wife who is very sensitive to sound in the morning. I have uh, a wife who is very sensitive to sound in the morning, so I don't use these alarms in the morning. Um, so those are all factors that go into what type of alarm and how loud should that alarm be. For me, what I look for is the level of the alarm as far as the loudness goes, the pitch of the alarm, the cadence of the alarm, whether or not I can turn the alarm off. And finally, I want to be able to schedule that alarm to the date. So I prefer Casio watches that have that programmable date function. Now they have daily alarms. They also have some Casio watches will have a weekday alarm or a weekend alarm. And honestly, there's a Timex out there that I'm going to be putting in, into the mix. We're going to have not just Casios in here. I've got a Timex that I'm going to put in there. I'm also going to put in my analog Zeppelin chronograph, which also has an alarm. It's a quartz watch, but it's an analog, and it has an alarm on it. And we're going to play that one out too. So what you're going to see in this video from here on out is going to be all of the recorded uh, decibel readings off of my phone. It's by no means scientific. It's not intended to be. What it is is a comparison between the watches so that you can see which watches are louder than other watches. So if you have one of these, you'll know if other watches that are on this list are louder or softer, or maybe you have one that is the loudest or it is the soft softest of this bunch. So again, this is not a complete list. This is just the Casios that I have, including a Timex and also a Zeppelin. Um, so by, by no means am I saying that these are the best or they're the worst. I'm just using this as a comparison. So, so with that, Let's get started with our review of the audible alarms on digital watches and one analog watch. So all of these watches have been tested using my decibel, decibel meter on my phone. Again, not a scientific tool by any means, but it does give us a relative reading that we can use to compare to others because it's the same tool. We're, we're erasing all the other variables by using the same tool. So this is a relative comparison. And in that sense, we are going to be just fine as far as being able to say which one is louder than the other or softer than the other. We just won't be able to say what the actual decibel reading is. There's a lot of factors that go into that. I'm not going to get into just what I've seen as far as the loudness, but you can tell when you have a louder uh, watch versus a softer watch. And relatively speaking, you can make that comparison. So I'm going to use my iPhone, and this is a decibel app on my iPhone and it also allows me to take a video of this watch as we go through and test this. So what I'll do is I'll set this up so that it starts off as a zero. We're going to go back here and make sure that all of our maximums are zeroed out. Now what we have left is uh, just to wait for the alarm to go off. And so we're going to start the recording here in about 30 seconds. So we'll start the recording when this gets to about 50 seconds. Uh, it was set up to go at, off at 2.13, and right now we're at 2.12.30 30 seconds. So in about 20 seconds, we'll, we'll turn on the recorder, and everything in the house is as quiet as it's going to be. You're going to see a bunch of ambient noise on the meter as I record this, which is not which is no big deal because what we're looking for is the maximum volume. So we're looking at the highest volume that comes up as a result of the alarm going off. Okay, 
So here we go. We're going to start this. And there we go. So that's it. Now we're going to try it one more time just to make sure. I'm going to adjust the alarm here. Okay. Oh. Add one more minute. Turn that back on. Okay. We'll go back here and reset. And we'll get started here in just a second. All right. So now what we have is we have this saved onto the phone. I'm going to transfer this over to the computer and we'll post all these together. So now the next step here, I'm going to show you all the readings for this, for these uh, different watches. And uh, we'll make these relative comparisons and see which of these alarms is the louder alarm. My predictions in this testing portion was really that the bigger watches tended to be the more desirable watches that I had. Some of the smaller ones, I knew they were kind of loud. I just didn't think that they were as loud or potentially as loud as some of the larger watches that I had. I certainly didn't think that this watch coming up here right here, my Pathfinder, was going to be as quiet as it was, relatively speaking. It's at a uh, maximum of 40.7. So, And this is the watch is the antithesis of that, 54.8 uh, as far as the calculator watch goes. And there's some interesting data that I pulled out of this that I think is really worth taking a little bit of time here at the end of all of these watches that you're going to see here. I'm just kind of going through these just so that you can see what they turned out as far as the maximum. Now, ignore the peak. I'm not exactly sure what they meant by peak. I know that the max was the, as far as that needle goes on the decibel meter, would pin out at that particular rating. So um, the peak, I'm not exactly sure. Minimum, obviously, that was more or less the ambient noise um, in the room. So that's not reliable either. And the average, the longer you let the run, uh, this, this uh, recording run, um, the more closely it's going to be aligned to the minimum because there just isn't enough loud noise to overcome the the minimum, the, the volume of the minimum noise that's out there. So anyway, just a little statistic thing I'm starting to geek out on. But these watches all, there was a number of them that surprised me. And we're going to take a look here in just a second at the data. And what really surprised me, I think, was the G-Shocks. Because the G-Shocks here, the, the square, was one of the lowest scoring or lowest decibel watches out there. So um, let's take a quick look here at the data. And when you look at the data, you can see ranking 1 through 17. There was a tie at uh, number 8. There were two uh, watches that ranked 8th. So 8 and 9 were taken up there. But 1 through 6, you can see, look at the cost of those watches. All of them are under $35. Then you go with 7 through 13, and you start getting into some of the more expensive watches. Now, the Zeppelin is an analog quartz watch. I threw that in there just because I was curious to see how it would rank against the Casios. And it's right there in the, in, towards the middle. And then the bottom half, or the bottom, I shouldn't say bottom half, the bottom ranked watches, the 14 through 17, very interesting as far as the qualifications or the qualities of those watches. Now, if you look, the G-Shocks scored at the bottom, the bottom third. And then when you look at the 100 meter plus water resistance rating, the overwhelming majority of them were in the bottom half as far as the the, the uh, notification loudness ranking goes. So there's, I think there's some interesting things going on here when it comes to the design of the watch. And maybe this has to do with just the amount of stuff that is in there. It could have to do with the resonance 
of the alarm and, you know, having some of the, the uh, for the G-Shock, you have some rubber or some shock absorbing material in there that may minimize the output of the volume. So some of those things I think all come into play when it comes down to the overall loudness of these watches. And then you look at the other end, the very cheap watches, almost all of them. Um, yeah, if you look at the top half, you know, if you... <clears throat> <coughs> If you look above the, uh, let's see here, the DBC 611, which is ranked eighth, everything above that is, again, underneath $35. And if you take out the DBC 11, um, you've got the F91 on, on up. And it's just, there you go. The top half are all less than $35. And so I think the construction of those watches allows for a higher resonance or a higher volume to be emitted out of the watch case. Whereas when you get into the higher water resistance ratings, when you get into th some of the G-Shocks, I just think that there's more dampening that goes on because of the construction of the watch. It's more likely to go on. Now, I don't know if that's the answer or not. It's just something that when you look at the data, you can see that, yeah, there's definitely a pattern going on here for a couple of different things. Um, and price is kind of in there. Although you have the DW290 down there at $40 or $39, and it is number 15. Okay, the AE1500 is number 12, and that's $22. So there are some outliers, and one of the things about statistics is you never let the exceptions drive the rule. You always leave the exceptions as what they are, which are the exceptions. So, <laughs> and that's just one of the things I find in, on YouTube that is just almost comical, how quickly YouTubers are willing to give that up and say, well, I got, I got a bad watch, and therefore this whole company just sucks. Well, that's... That is bad statistical analysis. That's bad overgeneralization. So we just don't do that in, in data research. So, so what does this all mean when it comes down to the application of this information for buyers? It looks to me as though the cheaper watches, uh, you know, when you buy a Casio and you get a watch that's under $35, under $40, let's just say under $40, you're more than likely going to end up with a watch that has a louder alarm. Now, that would be helpful for people who obviously have hearing disabilities or hard of hearing, that kind of thing. Uh, but if you're looking for a watch that's a little bit more discreet, you might end up getting a better volume that's more that matches more the discreteness that you're looking for with a more expensive watch, which is kind of counterintuitive, actually, when you think about it that the quieter the alarm, the more expensive the watch tends to be. It doesn't have to always be that way. Again, look at the DW290 or the AE1500. Both of those watches are relatively quiet. But also keep in mind that water resistance plays a role in this as well. So if you're getting a watch that has a higher water resistance rating, you may end up with a watch that's more discreet. So for those of you working in office conditions, like you know you do a lot of meetings and things like that, and you accidentally leave your alarm on, or you want to have an alarm go off, but you don't want it to be just obnoxiously loud, a watch like a 100 meter water resistance or a G-Shock or both is going to be something that I think more than likely is going to get you a quieter alarm as far as the application or the usage of that watch. I, When it comes down to alerts, I, I got to tell you, the alarm, the audible alarm is secondary to me now because I've, I've come across several vibrate alert watches, the GD350, the W736, Big Sky. Both of those are vibrate alert, and I prefer those overwhelmingly to audio. And the reason being is that there is no noise, obviously. It's on my wrist. If you're sitting right next to me, you may hear the vibration on my wrist. But if you're sitting one or two people away from me, I don't think you're going to hear that at all. And so just the discreteness of that alarm, I think, is very helpful and, uh, and it's very practical. So to wrap this up, what do I think of these different Casio audible alarms? I really think, you know... You, you can run the gamut when it comes to the volume, but you're generally going to get a softer, more quiet alarm with something with higher water resistance or a G-Shock watch based off of the sample that I have. Does that mean that all G-Shocks out there are quiet like this? Probably not. Uh, I, I can't speak for the other ones. Again, that's that's getting into that overgeneralization category. So based off of what I have here, there seems to be a trend that way. Don't know if that trend continues into other G-Shocks that are out there. So for me... Uh, you know, I don't really rely on the audible alarms as much as I think I do. Um, I tend to use the alarms more for cooking, more for quiet situations. So 
For me, a quiet watch is not that big of a deal. I don't generally use the watch as an alarm clock to wake me up. If that was the case, I would choose alarms that were louder. So I would choose a cheaper watch, generally with less water resistance. So those are kind of my applications, the way that I would go about this uh, based off of the information that I have and just the watches that I have in front of me and the ones I know that are quiet and the ones that are, are louder. And uh, for me, the DBC32 is just a rock star when it comes to volume. And the Square is one of the quietest mouses out there. And I think I've heard that before, that the Square alarm is just, it's not real loud. Um, and that's maybe something that's carried over from the late 80s when it came out. But at the same time, um, that's just kind of how it goes. So put in the comments down below what you think of this experiment. And uh, if you have any watches out there that you know are really loud or really quiet, love to hear more information about that. And uh, yeah, it's just a, it's an interesting topic. And I think it's something that would be helpful for anybody who's looking for Casios out there. So share that information with everybody. Also check out my webpage, realidealgear.com for any watches that I've reviewed that are for sale. Um, many Casios that I do sell also come with a flashlight, kind of a beginner EDC type kit or just a, an EDC kit that you might be interested in. So both of them, the flashlight and the watch are, I think, very, very good deals. I've been selling a lot of those lately. So, um, but check the, the, the website, realidealgear.com and check out what I have for sale there. So thank you very much. My name's Tim. This has been another Real Ideal Gear Review. We'll catch you guys next time.